Ahsoka Tano, Season 1, Episode 5, Thoughts. This episode is called Shadow Warrior. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to, including this episode, another episode I love. Yeah, before I get into it, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the second after Strikers, and I implore you to do so, and then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's get in. Yeah, we, yeah, um, we open on some very peaceful shots of the planet, and yeah, Hera lands and I, I gotta say the moment that I saw the map in pieces I was like are they actually gonna have is it is is Hira and Huyang gonna fix it and oh you know like Balin should have just brought it with it but thankfully no it's it's it was still very very naive of him to leave it there unless he's like trying to sabotage but yeah and let's see. Yeah, you know, um, Jason really wants to leave the the ship, so she's like, "Okay, just stay where I can see you," because she's really looking to lose Jason. Like, Kanan's got to be up there in the afterlife. What are you doing? What? What? You know, just okay. So. Honey, you see how over there there's like a mass of water, there's like, you know, rocks. If you are going to, to like, skip and dance around, try to stay at least a little bit away from there, okay? You know, and yes, I realize that Chopper is there with him, but I would not trust Chopper to not hurt someone. And, yeah, you know, Huyang devastated about losing them. And, you know, he says, I told them to stay together, but they never listened. The one time that I wasn't mean to, to Sabine. And, yeah, we, we go back to where, you know, we've all been waiting with with bated breath you know anticipating yeah Anakin and Ahsoka again and you know she points out you look the same well less animated you know and he's like you look old dude holy crap I mean I know that Darth Vader is like the most evil I didn't realize he was so catty. And she crosses her arms. And it's just, yeah. Can't, can't go very long without that. And then it becomes clear, you know, they will not be able to fix the map, which I'm very relieved about. Would be such a easy, obvious way to solve it. And Leia is referenced as working on keeping them, you know, get, buying them time off screen. I really appreciate that she's off screen. I don't think anybody needs to see the the you know, in two different movies they they digitally you know, it was it was bad. It was bad both times. Look, we all love Harry Fisher. We all miss her. We all wish we could have more, but that was just awful. Let's see. Jason, good work. Danger agrees with you. And... Let's see. So, yeah. Uh, Anakin knocked her... Right, a uh, great fight between Anakin and Ahsoka. And Anakin knocked her into a flashback where the fog of war allows some smooth transitions. And, yeah, um... I really appreciate that the, you know, it's not overwhelming with the massive scope. You know, we've seen the Clone Wars play out before. We don't need to see something so big. This was more personal, despite it being in the middle of a big battle. And I, I really appreciate that the, the musings on, you know, is, are, are the two of them, 
is is it just a legacy of of death and destruction and uh the the the, the actress playing young Ahsoka is is really really great um apparently i i just got done watching um hold on i'll have it momentarily the the video on this episode by Tyler Calvert and he said that the the actress playing younger um Ahsoka was you know the she also played Oh, it's got to be in here somewhere. Um, um, that um, she also played young Gamora. And, yeah, you know, just incredibly talented. I'm, I'm glad that she's continuing to act. You know, there's some child actors who, who don't do very much but she's she's really really talented so yeah I am not seeing her name anywhere okay moving on so the right I I really loved the you know there's a couple of shots where Sky Anakin Sky Guy you know goes between being, you know, the 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 version we've seen, and then Darth Vader, that was, yeah. And yeah, you know, that they looking for Ahsoka, they get low, get low, get low, get low. And yeah, very cool to see the the Battle of Mandalore. And arms crossed yet again. And I think at this point it was both Ahsoka and Anakin. And yeah, very, very cool when he ignites his saber and it's red. Let's see. I like that at, at one point he like grabs like uh, Ahsoka's wrist and like, you know, it. it he does something very similar against Obi-Wan in in their duel in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, you know, basically like it it you know, it's a, like moving the the lightsaber of of his enemy towards their their head. And let's see. yeah, and and Ahsoka sinks and I gotta say, for like a couple of seconds, I was like, "Did Hera actually let Jason get into the water to to fish Ahsoka out?" But no, thankfully, it was someone else. I don't think I've appreciated before this episode. Hu Yang has very expressive eyes. I really appreciate that. And <laughs> he's back to being mean to to young Jedi to be. Because he is just shutting Jason down completely, and yeah, so so Ahsoka is able to pick up the memory of of where Sabine was going from the map, and yeah, the fleet is coming. I don't know what they're gonna do at this point. I don't think they're coming to help us, and the whales. Are, are back, which is very, very cool to see. I'm always in favor of fiction trying to increase empathy for whales. And, yeah, they talk about um, Hera's command may be suspended if they aren't effective in arguing for. And Ahsoka's witness testimony could be critical to that. And see, yeah, and, and Ahsoka gets on the, the wing to, to communicate with the Pergil. She has returned to us as Ahsoka in white.
and yeah, you know, she's not sure if the pergola are going to go to the right place. They could, you know, could go anywhere, but that's better than going nowhere, which is, of course, referring to the third episode of this show, Time to Fly. Yeah, I really appreciate that Jason finally had a point. I thought they were just going to keep, you know, saying, oh, he might become a Jedi, he might become a Jedi, and it's like, okay, we get it, but we knew that already. You know, we, that was, the moment that we saw that Kanan had a kid, yeah, there's a pretty decent, ch like, that's, that's how these things go. You know, uh, some of the most powerful Jedi were the offspring of other, you know, powerful Jedi, and then in the one case, Sith. But, but yeah, you know, he actually, he was critical to, to figuring it out, being the, the only Jedi on, you know, yeah, he helped enable them to find Ahsoka. So there, there was, there was not a lot of plot progress, but it was still a very compelling episode. I really appreciated the, the theme and the, I mean, yeah, for for both Anakin and Ahsoka. A lot of their time was spent fighting, fighting wars. So this this idea that that is the their legacy, you know, that is of course something a Jedi has to contend with. You know, obviously there are some people who are like, you know, happy to have that be their legacy, but it's not very Jedi like. You know, and and the episode didn't take forever to get to the point, which you know, as I mentioned in my video on the episode time to fly the third episode I really felt like they were just yeah I I appreciate that there was you know there was some really good stuff in that episode I it really felt like it took forever to me and this episode did not I think that is everything that I have to say um so what what we saw here as the world between worlds was different from you know in in the when it appeared in in rebels it was this thing of you know you can witness the past you can maybe even change the past you know save the life of someone that you know but the you know, here it's the, the no, nothing is really being changed. It's stuff that's being experienced again, and you know, there's a um, you know, it's being explored. Which you know, it's not you know, Clone Wars the show also explored. You know, is fighting. You know, there there are episodes where it's like, okay, the answer here is not to fight. I think that might be, but yeah, I I appreciate this use of the world between worlds. I thought that, you know, it doesn't like contradict what we saw on Rebels, and it is a compelling use. You know, the the. To be clear, like Ezra also witnessed past events that he didn't change, but he didn't like live, you know, he didn't re experience them the way that we saw here. And here we also have like at least some of the time Ahsoka is clearly aware that she's not, you know, it's, it's not like it's just happening again. It's like, wait, I've been here before kind of thing, and, uh, yeah, and, and she can have conversations with Anakin that, you know, she's, like, he's like, I don't remember the Battle of Mandalore, and she says we had, you know, we were no longer, yeah, you were no longer, I, I forget her exact line, but, you know, so, you know, that's obviously not a conversation that they had, he wasn't even there before and 
yeah, um, I, I appreciated that um, Tamara Morrison, you know, made at least some, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that the, the, um, I, f I feel like at least some of the soldiers were not played by him, but he definitely voiced um, Rex. I think... Um, right, and I, I want to address... Um, so, last... When, when I did my video on episode 4... I legitimately did think, okay, there's, you know, there's no way the characters are going to, or wait, did I just say Hira? Anyway, I might have suggested that Ahsoka was not going to be able to follow Sabine Wren, you know, yeah, I, I was wrong. I hadn't thought about that the coordinates could be derived from the map even after Broken, and that that would be, you know, enough. I'd like to think that I didn't say that there was no way to travel, because obviously I didn't forget about the Purgle. I think it was the... but just the, the map. You know, you, you... You can't just go somewhere. You need to know where you're going. Um, but yeah. I, I am hopeful for the remaining three episodes, and I quite appreciate that we don't actually, you know, the 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 end of episode four left us, you know, it's like okay, so they're actually gonna get to to where Thrawn and Ezra are, and oh, Ahsoka is is you know going to, and, you know, engage with, with Anakin, I appreciate that we didn't actually see, you know, the, the, yeah, Morgan and the others arrive at their destination yet. Um, that might be about what I have to say um, I, right, um, the, the, I was a little surprised, given the title, that, the, you know, Zilla Enterprises made absolutely no appearance at all. That was, that was a little strange to me. Um, ah, crap. I feel like there's one more thing that I wanted to comment on. Um, I already mentioned that the action was great between Anakin and Ahsoka. The action during the Clone Wars bits were also really great. And the... Right, um... It does appear, you know, there was a, a theory, I forget which YouTuber had had the theory that that's not really Anakin. You know, it's, it's, um, I forget what exactly it was supposed to be instead, but, yeah, you know, it does appear to have been Anakin and, yeah, um, I guess le legitimately, like, you know, normally we've we've seen force ghosts before. You know, it's not uncommon that like Jedi will will come back to to give sage advice and such. But this is the first time that there's like, you know, he had a physical presence. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a, a duel. So yeah, I I. That was that was a, a compelling addition to the lore, and it doesn't feel like it just goes against, you know, like the the 
I mean, there's plenty of ghost stories where, you know, yeah, the ghost can come back to where they, like, lived and died and such. But, you know, they might not be able to have a physical presence, you know, un unless there's slightly other circumstances or some kind, you know. But, yeah, and the... Yeah, the, the fact that he does look... I, I, yeah, I guess he did look... Anakin looked the way he did in this episode at the end of Return of the Jedi as of 2005 as well. But, yeah. The, the re-edit by Lucas. Um, but, but, yeah, it felt like a um, very logical, you know place to go. It didn't feel like just fan service, which some of the Anakin stuff in, in the Obi-Wan show did feel like fan service. Um, and, and yeah, you know, I, I, I will probably never tire of saying Hayden Christensen, under the right circumstances, incredibly talented. You know, and, and yeah, he does actually do a really great job playing Anakin now that it's not Lucas putting words in his mouth that no one can make sound natural and directing him to be so so unnatural just you know if if you want something by Hayden Christensen from back then you know around this the same time as the the Star Wars prequel movies Shattered Glass from 2003. He is really, really good in that. And it's a really great movie also. But yeah, um, that is everything that I have to say about this one. So, yeah. Um, next episode, I, I might be able to cover Wednesday. Otherwise, it will be Thursday of next week. And until then... Force live long and prosper.